Don't you like food that's tasty and delicious? I do. Then what are you waiting for? Amongst all the change in the fast food industry, one company that has essentially kept the same menu for decades, with some options, is White Castle. Head over to White Castle. It's what you crave. A fast food restaurant that is so good at what they do that it spawned a movie franchise. We wanted to delve into the history of the restaurant behind Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. So strap in, grab some antacids. Forget White Castle, let's go get some pussy. Huh? and get ready to learn about everyone's favorite place to go after a night of hard partying. Think you could help me with this? Hot. Uh -huh. Whoa, those aren't real. Yes, they are. White Castle and the original Super Size Me. Sure you know how to get there? I haven't been to White Castle in ages. Dude, I'm telling you, there's one right by that multiplex. In 2004, documentary maker Morgan Spurlock burst onto the scene by filming a documentary that revolved around him eating nothing but McDonald's for a month straight. Look how big that french fry is. That thing is like four feet tall. There has never been a documentary that has been as destructive and transformative as Super Size Me, as it was very popular and supposedly showed how unhealthy McDonald's food can be. I want the perfect food. But there's a lot of controversy over how much of the content Spurlock faked. Either way, McDonald's responded by adding healthy options to their menu, and also by stating that their food isn't meant to be eaten for every meal. Before Spurlock, though, there was a University of Minnesota medical student who was tasked with eating nothing but White Castle burgers for every meal for not just one month, but for nearly three months straight. Back when hamburgers were invented over 100 years ago, arguably by the founder of White Castle, there were people who were adamantly against hamburgers for whatever reason, and who stated that hamburgers were not only unhealthy, which is true, but that they were essentially poison. So the powers that be at White Castle commissioned that study to prove that the burgers weren't toxic, basically. And surprisingly, the med student not only survived his three months of tiny burgers, but felt fine afterwards as well. But considering this was the days before antibiotics, the word fine is relative, of course. Craving more? Hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Working for White Castle used to be a great gig. Those tender little White Castle burgers. Those little itty bitty grilled onions that just explode in your mouth. If there's any type of job these days, and really for the past few decades, that is looked down upon, it's a fast food gig. Come on, Boogie, let's burn this down! There are numerous statements and stereotypes that exist about working for a fast food restaurant. You are so busted. Like calling it a McJob, or in someone saying that at least they're not flipping burgers for a living. While that's not really true these days, as most fast food restaurants have attempted to make working for them better by offering better wages, better benefits, and or the opportunity for advancement, the reality is, as recent movements have shown, working for a fast food restaurant is still not the best gig in the world. Back in the day, though, that wasn't true, as White Castle used to pay their employees between $18 to $30 a week, which was a lot of century ago. Beyond that, White Castle offered paid benefits that weren't a regular thing in those pre-union days, like paid sick leaves, pension plans, remember those, and upward mobility by offering some opportunities for promotion. That's all thanks to the little five-cent burgers they used to sell by the sackful. No matter what, we are not ending this night without White Castle in our stomachs, agree? Agree. The White Castle slider hasn't changed in 100 years. The name slider supposedly evolved because the burgers were so small they could slide right down. White Castle is the oldest fast food joint in the game. As you'll see in this video, the founder of White Castle created the world's first fast food hamburger and its bun. Why? He started selling them for five cents a pop, often selling sacks full of his burgers to orphans who would sell them around the corner to rich people in fancy cars who were too lazy to get out. Out of all the burgers from fast food joints, the White Castle burger, known as a slider, a White Castle, or a gut bomb, is the most identifiable to people across the world, mostly due to its size. As it turns out, that's how they made the burger a century ago. Even more importantly to us, we were the first to sell a billion. A billion? A billion burgers. Yeah. with the same basic recipe. So while things are changing quicker and quicker these days thanks to technology and how it exponentially improves upon itself, you can rest assured that there's one constant in the world and that constant is a small, delicious burger that you can still buy in bulk and that rich people are still ashamed to admit they love. White Castle is about more than burgers. Rose, let's get us some poontang, then we'll go to White Castle. 
White Castle as a business seems pretty cut and dry. It's a business that owns restaurants that used to be burger stands that makes arguably the best burger known to man. I've been craving burgers too. Fur burgers. Anyone that has seen the movie The Founder about the founding of McDonald's might know that there's a lot more to owning a fast food empire than just the food, or even the location the food is made in, as business is cutthroat and there are a lot of different opportunities for people to make money on side hustles. White Castle is no different, as when it was founded, the original CEO wanted White Castle locations to be small, cheap, and easy to build. To keep all of that in-house, White Castle created a company to make cheap porcelain and steel structures so they could essentially make money off of building their own buildings. They also bought the company that was supplying their employees with paper hats in 1932, which ended up being a gold mine in and of itself, as they were creating over 50 million paper hats for the entire fast food industry by the 1960s. Lap dance. White Castle provided vehicles during World War II. This night is about the American dream. Part of the subsidiaries that we've mentioned was a company named Porcelain Steel Buildings that provided, you guessed it, porcelain and steel buildings for the construction of White Castle locations. During World War II, a lot of the United States' economy was based on the war effort, and with a lot of other countries struggling to recover from the war, this created the opportunity for the United States to become the largest economy in the world. White Castle's Porcelain Steel Buildings was no exception as it went from fabricating cheap facades for White Castle locations to building amphibious vehicles for the war effort, which is surprising because when it comes to what you'd expect to float, the last two things that come to mind are porcelain and steel. This is the best thing I've ever eaten. After the war, PSB was left with a surplus of supplies for those vehicles, so they ended up creating another company that created equipment for lawn spreading. Today, PSB still works with Scott's, one of the largest lawn care companies in the world. So the next time you see a nice lawn, remember that you have World War II and White Castle to thank for that. Reality is weird. Hello, Forrest. Hello, Jenny. The original White Castle restaurant designs. Tonight, we stormed the castle wall! The original and old school White Castle locations were actually set up to look like actual castles. The irony of it is that the location that the White Castle restaurants were based on wasn't actually a castle at all. Do you happen to know how to get to the White Castle? Yeah but rather a church. After the Great Fire of 1871, one of the few things that were still standing was the Chicago Water Tower. The Gothic design actually looks like a castle, so you can't fault them for using it as inspiration. And to be honest, regardless of what it looked like or what it was based on, it's actually a lot cooler than the fast food joints we get these days that are typically stuck in or near a failing strip mall. Those box-designed restaurants may be cheaper and larger, but they're still not as cool as those few remaining White Castle locations and that's most likely why people refer to the past as the good old days. Onion rings. I know, that's so stinky. These days, there are still a few original White Castle buildings around, although those are typically not actually restaurants anymore. For example, one of the original locations in Minneapolis still looks like it did decades ago, although there's an insurance agency inside as opposed to a restaurant. What the White Castle name means. Get up, we're going to White Castle. White Castle founder Walt Anderson was single-handedly responsible for the invention of the modern fast food restaurant, so it's safe to say that he's the king of both hamburgers and fast food spots. However, the name White Castle wasn't something that alluded to Anderson's royalty in the meat patty industry. When he invented the fast food hamburger in 1916, the world was full of misinformed people. And because of that, and the fact that hamburgers were a new kind of food, people didn't know what to think. Or at least some people. Other people, like Upton Sinclair and Frederick J. Schlink were adamant that hamburgers were basically poisonous. In their books, The Jungle and Eat, Drink, and Be Wary, respectively, Sinclair and Schlink exposed hamburger meat as extremely unsafe to the point that it was essentially poison. <gasps> While it's true that uncooked hamburger meat will get you sick, it's raw. What's the matter with you? We send that out there, it's gonna come straight back. That was just reactionary nonsense that could have put Anderson out of business. With that in mind, Anderson decided to combine two words that together would convey both purity and solidity, a pristine image, and those words were white and castle. White castle sliders were instantly popular.
I want 30 sliders, five french fries, and four large cherry Cokes. I want the same, except make mine Diet Cokes. White Castle founder Walt Anderson created the modern concept of fast food. And while it's said that the restaurant business is the most difficult to break into and sustain, Walt had no problems when he introduced hamburgers to the world through his hamburger stands in 1916. In the book Selling Them by the Sack by David G. Hogan, it was stated that there was a regular contingent of young orphaned boys who routinely would buy an entire sack of the five-cent burgers that Walt Anderson was cooking up. Please, sir, I want some more. Anderson noticed this, and considering that the young boys didn't have money, ever, he decided to follow them one day after they bought their second sack of burgers. Around the corner, the boys were delivering the burgers to a hand that came out of the window of a limo, meaning that regardless of socioeconomic status or age, everyone loves White Castle, even if they think they're too good to get out of their car to get them. As anyone who has ordered a Crave case will attest, it's really not much different these days, as you typically end up waiting for a good half an hour while those delicious little jam jams are being cooked. The only thing missing is the orphans. I'm so hungry, I'm frightened I might eat the lad that sleeps next to me. The White Castle founder created the modern fast food joint. What the hell are you doing here? You guys kept talking about White Castle last night so much, it made me start to crave it too. The founder of White Castle, Walt Anderson, was essentially both a visionary and a genius. Anderson took out an $80 loan after his first hamburger stand, which opened in 1916, became an instant sensation. It's a small burger with huge taste. He ended up receiving that loan from a local real estate broker named W.E. Ingram, who went by Billy, who ended up as the first CEO of White Castle. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. By 1921, they established a chain of burger stands with five-cent burgers, and those stands were known for being as efficient as they were small. While McDonald's's Ray Kroc is widely credited for that, that glorious name, McDonald's. If you've seen the movie The Founder, you'll know that he stole most of what he is credited for. It was love at first sight. I knew right then and there, I had to have it. And the fast food concept is no exception, because either way you slice it, that's the concept that eventually took off and became what we know as the fast food restaurant today. And we all have Walt Anderson to thank. The White Castle's founder created the modern hamburger. I want something we haven't had in a while. Something different, something that'll really hit the spot. Walt Anderson was originally a short order cook from Wichita, Kansas. Before Walt, there really wasn't a hamburger, at least how we know it. And the story behind how he became the king of burgers is too good to be true. Hello? What's up? One day, Anderson was attempting to make some meatballs, and he was having trouble with the fact that his meatballs were sticking to the griddle whenever he attempted to pick them up. In his frustration, he smashed one of the meatballs with his spatula, flattening it. When he saw the flattened patty, he had an epiphany. But rather than putting the patty between bread, like some other people had come up with around that time, he invented the perfect bun. And that's how the modern hamburger was born. Like many inventions, hamburgers were created by accident. And if Walt had better anger control problems, perhaps we wouldn't have have any hamburger spots. God bless that man's temper. What's your favorite fast food joint? Let us know, and be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And don't go anywhere just yet. Check out some of our other videos.